Affirmative. Representative Park, uh, yeah. the gavel. clerk, call the roll. No, call excuse me. No, listen, call it says yes. Yeah, any doubt as to whether good cause exists, call the, the governmental body should provide 24 hours notice. Yeah. This is clearly a violation. A of dramatic law. scene last night in three weeks of twists and turns as lawmakers and the governor deal with the state budget. Capital shocker. This is the way the State Journal headlined those developments. UW political scientist Charles Franklin has been watching with the rest of us and joining us today. Hello again. Welcome. Good to be here. Capital shocker? Uh, it certainly was. It certainly happened fast. In a way, you know, the way the Democrats left the state was such a shocker that it caught Republicans off guard. So the change to the bill and its rapid movement through the Senate last night was, I think, very much the equivalent. And politically was the equivalent. A lot of complaints about how both sides have behaved. But the fact is you use the legislative rules and the Constitution to push your political perspective. The Democrats did that and bought time for debate, and now the Republicans have done that and gotten their bill through. It means both sides are upset with the other side, but it's classic political maneuvering using the rules of the legislature. And it becomes law when the governor signs it. When is that likely to happen? Uh, any moment. <laughs> no, I, I don't actually tonight. know. Yeah. But um, uh, the signature should happen without any further ado, uh, without any long delay. I don't think there's anything required before it goes to him for a signature. And that law will be law until Scott Walker is no longer governor? It certainly will be. Uh, you know, there's the recall elections issue. There are the 2012 legislative elections. Those could conceivably change the balance in one or ultimately both houses of the legislature. But as long as uh, Governor Walker is in office and holds veto power, he can prevent any change in this uh, as long as the Democrats don't control uh, supermajority. The main point I would make is that this will be signed into law in the next day or two or three. And at that point, the unions and state employees will have to deal with the consequences of it for at least several years to come. And that deals with union dues being collected, with representation, with certification of unions, and so on. So this is really a, a long-term consequences here for at least a couple of years and more likely three and a half or four years, from and longer perhaps. Well, and from here, as you said, the recall effort could potentially pick up steam and then it will go from here to the courts. It, maybe. it can. I think there are two venues here. One is the courts. The issue of whether public notice was given and required to be given, there's arguments on both sides there. Likewise, procedurally, did the Senate uh, have the right to do this? Is this a fiscal measure or not? Those will be fought out in the courts. But there's also the electoral arena where this can be fought out. And we've talked a lot about the recalls. If you could flip three seats from Republican to Democrat in the Senate, that would give Democrats control of the Senate. But then all you'd have is divided government. That would not give Democrats in the unions the power to undo what has been done. And then finally, we also have a Supreme Court race coming up on April 5th. So far, that has not become a proxy fight for the things going on at the Capitol, uh, but there's certainly beginning to be some talk, and we haven't yet seen any of the major political players try to politicize that Supreme Court race in terms of the current uh, unpleasantness at the Capitol. So is it going to be gridlock? Can these people finally come and work together again? I, I, I think it won't be gridlock in the short term. I think what this did was reestablish Republican dominance of the legislature and of course the governorship. Uh, the Democrats may very well come back. In fact, I would think they would because they've got very little left to lose. Uh, but constructive dialogue seems like that's a long ways off. All right. It's not over yet. No. All right, Charles. Back to your desk in the newsroom, Charles. <laughs> we'll see you soon, I'm sure. Thanks, Charles. Right. Good to see you.